Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we will be deriving the field strength in the case of space wave propagation. So how do we derive the field strength in the case of space wave propagation? Well, let's find out. So here, let us neglect the Earth's curvature and let us assume that Earth is perfectly flat. So therefore, let us assume the flat Earth's surface like this. And here, let us assume a transmitter antenna. And here, let us assume a receiver antenna. So here, since we have assumed the Earth's surface to be flat, there are two types of signals that are received at the receiver. First is a direct signal like this. And the second one is an indirect signal, which first falls on the ground and then gets reflected back like this. So there are two types of signals here. So let the height of the transmitter antenna be taken as HT and the height of the receiver antenna be taken as HR. And let this point be taken as T dash. And let this point be taken as R dash. And let this point be taken as O. And let the distance between the transmitter antenna and the receiver antenna be taken as D. So therefore, the effective field at the receiver is given as the vector sum of the direct field and the indirect field. So here, let this particular vector distance be given as D1. And let this particular vector distance, that is the distance from the transmitter to the ground and then back to the receiver, let that particular distance be taken as D2. Okay, so we need to find D1 and D2 first. So in order to find D1, we need to assume a right angle triangle. So for that, let me extend this particular point to here and let this point be taken as M dash. Okay, so now let us take this particular right angle triangle. That is right angle triangle T dash, R dash, M dash. So taking T dash, R dash, M dash. So here the hypotenuse squared, that is D1 squared is equal to altitude square plus base square. So, but here the base T dash M dash is given as the height of the transmitter minus the height of the receiver. When we subtract these two, we get this particular distance. So, therefore T dash M dash is given as HT minus HR. So, therefore applying Pythagoras theorem, we get hypotenuse squared is equal to altitude square plus base square. That is D1 squared is equal to D square plus HT minus HR the whole square. Let us take this as equation number 1. So now here in this case next we have to find D2. But in order to find D2 here what we observe is that D2 it touches the ground and then it gets reflected back. D2 is this entire distance, the entire path that is covered through the indirect signal. So therefore here what we do is we extend D2 downwards like this. We extend it downwards and therefore this particular distance would be equal to this particular distance and this particular distance is obtained as HR. This is because we have assumed this earth's surface to be a perfect reflector. That is a perfectly reflecting plane surface. So let us extend these also here. Let this be point A and let this be point P. So therefore, after extending this, D2 is this entire hypotenuse. So here, therefore, applying Pythagoras theorem, we get the hypotenuse squared is equal to the altitude square plus the base square. That is D2 squared is equal to altitude square, which is HT plus HR. HT plus HR, the whole square plus the base square, which is D square. Let that be taken as equation number 2. So now we have two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. From this we have D1 squared and D2 squared. So now let E0 be the field strength at the receiver due to the direct signal and let KE0 be the magnitude of the field received at R dash due to the reflected signal. Here k is the ground reflection coefficient. So the field strength due to the direct signal is taken as E0 and field strength due to the indirect signal that is the reflected signal is taken as ke0 where k is the ground reflection coefficient. So now from equation number 1 we have d1 is equal to square root of d square plus ht minus hr the whole square which can also be written as when we take the value of d outside we will get d into 1 plus ht minus hr by d the whole square the whole raised to 1 by 2. But from binomial expansion we know the binomial expansion for 1 plus x the whole raised to n which is given as 1 plus x the whole raised to n is equal to 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial into x square plus so on so on so on. So therefore on applying this over here 
we get d1 is equal to d into 1 plus ht minus hr divided by d the whole square into 1 by 2. So now distributing d into this bracket we get this is equal to d plus ht minus hr the whole square by 2d. So therefore this can be taken as equation number 3. Okay. So I am writing this over here. Therefore similarly we get d2 is equal to d plus ht plus hr the whole square by 2d. Let us take that as equation number 4. So here d1 is equal to d plus ht minus hr the whole square divided by 2d and d2 is equal to d plus ht plus hr the whole square divided by 2d and let these be taken as equation 3 and 4. So now here then the path difference is given as the difference between this path and the difference between this path that is it is given as d2 minus d1. So path difference is given as d2 minus d1. So taking d2 minus d1 we get this is equal to so now on expanding this we get we get d plus ht square plus hr square plus 2 ht hr minus d minus ht squared minus hr squared plus 2 ht hr. I have written it down over here. So here d and d gets cancelled. ht squared and ht squared gets cancelled. hr squared and hr squared gets cancelled. So what we end up getting is 2 ht hr plus 2 ht hr divided by 2d. So therefore part difference is given as is equal to 4 ht hr by 2d which is equal to 2 ht hr by t. So now I am writing this over here and now we have studied that the phase difference is equal to 2 pi by lambda into path difference. So here the path difference is given as 2 ht hr by t. So this is given as is equal to 2 pi by lambda into 2 ht hr by t so which then becomes equal to 4 pi ht hr divided by lambda d. So that is the phase difference. So this is the phase difference that happens due to the path difference. That is because of the difference between these two paths a particular phase difference happens. That is this phase difference. So I am writing this phase difference over here. Now let us take this phase difference as alpha because here two kinds of phase difference happens. One is the phase difference because of the path difference and the other is the phase difference because of the reflection. Okay. So here since we have assumed the earth's surface to be flat and since we have assumed that it is a perfect reflector the phase difference due to the reflection is equal to 180 degrees or pi radians. So let that phase difference be taken as beta. So therefore the phase difference due to reflection is equal to beta which is equal to 180 degree or pi radians. So therefore the total phase difference theta is alpha plus beta. So now let us find the effective field at the point r dash. So we saw that the effective field at r dash is the vector sum of the field due to the direct signal and the field due to the reflected signal. So therefore let us assume that the effective field at r dash is given as er. So therefore er is equal to e0 which is the field due to the direct signal plus k into e0 into e raised to minus j theta because this is the vector sum where k is the reflection coefficient and theta is the total phase which is given as alpha plus beta. So this then becomes equal to e0 into 1 plus k e raised to minus j theta. But we know that e raised to minus j theta is equal to cos theta minus j sin theta. So substituting that over here we get e0 into 1 plus k cos theta minus j k sin theta. So now I am writing this over here. So now the magnitude of this field is given as the square root of the sum of the real quantity squared plus the imaginary quantity squared. So therefore magnitude of ER is equal to E0 into root of 1 plus k cos theta the whole square plus k sin theta the whole square. So on expanding this we get this is a plus b the whole square. So this is 1 plus k squared cos square theta plus 2k cos theta plus k squared sin square theta. But here 
k squared into cos squared theta plus sin squared theta becomes 1. So here since we have assumed earth's surface to be a perfect reflector, we are taking the value of k is equal to 1. So therefore putting k is equal to 1, this expression becomes root of 2 plus 2k cos theta. But this expression is useless. So we have to convert this expression into another form. But we know that cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So putting that formula over here, this then becomes 2 plus 2 into 2 cos squared theta by 2 minus 1. The whole into E0, which is equal to E0 into root of 2 plus this becomes 4 cos squared theta by 2 and this becomes minus 2. So plus 2 and minus 2 gets cancelled. So this becomes equal to 2e0 cos theta by 2. So let me write this over here. So here the value of theta is given as alpha plus beta. So substituting that over here we get this is equal to 2e0 cos alpha plus beta by 2. So substituting the value of alpha as this and beta as pi, we get modulus of er is equal to 2 e0 into cos of 4 pi ht hr by lambda d by 2. Therefore, this becomes 2 lambda d plus beta by 2, that is pi by 2. But cos of pi by 2 plus an angle becomes sine of that angle. So, this becomes equal to 2 e sine 4 pi ht hr divided by 2 lambda d. But since the value of ht and hr, that is ht and hr, since the value of these two are very very small when compared to this particular distance d, this sign of this angle can be taken as the angle itself. So therefore this thus becomes approximately equal to 2 e0 into 4 pi ht hr divided by 2 lambda d. So therefore er is equal to e0 into 4 pi ht hr divided by lambda d. So let us take this as equation 6. And now if p is the effective power, if p is the effective power radiated towards r dash, then e0 is written as e0 is equal to 7 root p by d. So therefore putting this in this we get er is equal to 7 root p by d into 4 into 3.14 into ht into hr divided by lambda d. So therefore on substituting all this we get the value of er as er is equal to 88 root p ht hr divided by lambda d square. So that is the value of the effective field at the receiver. So I will write this over here. ER is equal to 88 root P into HT HR divided by lambda D square where P is the effective power radiated in watts. So therefore this thus is the effective field due to space wave propagation that is observed at a particular receiver. So I hope you guys can now derive the effective field strength at a receiver due to space wave propagation. So we will be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.